All right, lesson 9.2 is on multiplying polynomials. So we've talked about multiplying um, exponents recently in the last chapter, and we learned that if you multiply like bases, that you add the exponents. So that's going to be very important whenever we do this lesson. So the first example, <coughs> excuse me, the first example, multiply a monomial and a polynomial. So this should look uh, somewhat familiar to you, that it is distributive property. So basically what you're going to do is you're going to take this 2x cubed that's out here, and since it's right next to these parentheses and there's no sign in the middle, that does indicate multiplication. So you're talking about 2x cubed times everything that's in here. Every one of them. So distributing, you would have 2x cubed times x cubed. So you would multiply my numbers out front, add the exponents. 2x cubed times 3x squared, multiply the numbers out front, 6, add the exponents, 6x to the fifth. 2x cubed times a negative, make sure you're taking that negative sign with the number. 2x cubed times negative 2x is a negative 4x to the fourth. And 2x cubed times 5 would be 10x cubed. Same thing if you have binomial times another binomial. Okay, it's every term in here times every term in this one. So I would take x times 3x, 3x squared, x times 2 is a positive 2x, and then for my second one, I've got, make sure you take that it's a negative 4, negative 4 times 3x is negative 12x, and negative 4 times 2, negative 8. So if I have any like terms, I need to combine them. 3x squared cannot be combined with anything else, so it's just 3x squared. I have two first degree terms here that both just have an x. So I've got a positive 2x and a negative 12x is a negative 10x. And then negative 8 can't be combined with anything. So I take, when I multiply those two binomials, I end up with a trinomial, 3x squared minus 10x minus 8. Okay, let's do some practice problems down here at the bottom. So the first one, you are multiplying a monomial times a binomial. Distribute. So 7x squared and an x, when you multiply those together, you will end up with 7x cubed. x times 4 is just 4x. Make sure you write the number before the letter. When you're multiplying two binomials, you can do what we just did up there. a times 2a and a times 1. So a times 2a is 2a squared. a times 1 is just a. 3 times 2a is a positive 6a, and 3 times 1 is positive 3. Combine what, mm, supposed to be a 3. Combine what we can. I've got a positive a and a positive 6a, so I've got 2a squared plus 7a plus 3. Now, you may, uh, you probably have never heard of this, but um, in other algebra books, they do represent this a binomial times a binomial as the FOIL method. So I'm just going to go ahead and discuss that with you right now just for a minute. The F stands for the first terms. The O are the outer terms. I would be the inner terms. and then the L stands for the last terms. So here's what that means. On the problem that we just did, a plus 3a, sorry, a plus 3 times 2a plus 1. If I'm going to multiply the first terms, it means the first terms in each binomial. So a times 2a, 2a squared. The outer terms would be the ones on the outside of each binomial. 
So I've got an A times 1 is still just 1A. I've got the next letter is I for inner. So that means that they would want you to multiply the inner terms of both binomials. So I've got a 3 times 2A is 6A. And then the last one, they want the last terms. So last term in the binomial, last term in the binomial. So that would be a plus 3. Now notice this right here came out to the same as this right here. It just depends basically whichever one you want to um, remember, whichever method makes more sense to you, you will end up with the same answer. 2a squared plus 7a plus 3, no matter which way you do it. Just for practice, let's try the FOIL method on this one. FOIL method, the, so the first terms would be 4n times n would be 4n squared. The outer terms, this one, this one, 4n times 5 is a positive 20n. The inner terms, this one, this one, negative 1 times n is negative 1n. And then you've got the last terms, negative 1 times 5 is a negative 5. Reduce what you can, combine what you can. You will have 4n squared plus 19n. Whenever I combine these two right here, minus 5. So 4n squared plus 19n minus 5. Okay, moving on. Let's clear the screen off. Okay, if they talk about multiplying polynomials vertically, again, you can try this if you wish. I choose to just do the distributive property like we did in the first part, but again, it would be no different um, than multiplying actual numbers. Like if I had, this is a trinomial, so let's say I had three numbers multiplied by a binomial, so let's say multiplied by two numbers. What's going to happen here? You're going to take 5 times 3, they took negative 4 times negative 7. There you go. They took, next would be 5 times 2, negative 4 times 6b. 5 times 1, negative 4 times b squared. Then in your next step, whenever you have to multiply by this one and how you would have to, let me just go ahead and put this back up here. You would have to multiply, so you'd have to like leave an empty spot and then move over and times that by 12, carry the one. Same thing with this one. You're going to have to move over a spot. When you start timesing this 3b times everything, you would just move over a spot, multiply it all out. And then by moving over the spot, that just lines things up. So you'd end up with 3b cubed plus 14b squared minus 45b plus 28. Now again, if you just do the distributive property, can't use a FOIL method on this one because this is a trinomial. But again, if you just make sure that everything in the first one goes to everything in the second one, you'll be fine. Same answer either way. So let's try this one, multiplying a trinomial by a binomial. Sorry, multiplying a binomial by a trinomial, either way you want to say it. And I'm just going to do it using distributive property. And all of that is multiplied by 4x minus 3. So I've got 2x squared times 4x is 8x cubed. 2x squared times a negative 3 is negative 6x squared. Okay, let's go to the middle term. 5x times 4x is a positive 20x squared. A 5x times a negative 3 is negative 15x. Last one, negative 1 times 4x is negative 4x. 
negative 1 times negative 3 is a positive 3. So now you need, just need to combine what you can. So I've got all these, that was supposed to be a cubed, 8x cubed because I had 2x's there and 1x there. Okay, so 8x cubed, nothing I can combine with that. These two can be combined, 14x squared. These two can be combined, minus 19x. And that one, nothing to combine, so you just leave it alone. So you end up with 8x cubed plus 14x squared minus 19x plus 3 as your polynomial. Okay, down here at the bottom, they start to talk about the FOIL method, if we can get down here. So it's just the first outer, inner, last that I just talked to you about. But again, this only works, only works with binomials. So if you have a two-term polynomial, so a binomial times a binomial, that's what it is. And again, first terms, outer terms, inner terms, last terms, and that's the same order we even multiply by if we do um, distributive property anyway. So with that being said, let's try these last two down here at the bottom, or I guess there's three. All right, let's try those. x squared times x, x cubed, x squared times 2, positive 2x squared. Next, next term, 2x times x is a positive 2x squared. 2x times 2 is a positive 4x. Last one, 1 times x, supposed to be green. 1 times x is just 1x. And 1 times 2 is just a positive 2. Combine what I can, I would end up with x cubed plus 2, nope, plus 4x squared. Plus 5x plus 2. And that would be that answer. This one, 3y squared times 2y, 6y cubed. That's that one. That one would be negative 6y squared. Negative y, make sure you're taking that negative with it. Negative y times 2y minus 2y squared. Negative y times a negative 3 would be a plus 3y squared. Nope, sorry, just plus 3y. And the last one. 5 times 2y is a plus 10y, and a 5 times a negative 3 is a minus 15. Putting all that in order, 6y cubed minus 8y squared plus 13y minus 15, and those are written in descending order. And like I said, it's not necessarily counted wrong if you don't but it is a good idea to do that. It's just a widely accepted practice on how to do that. All right, last one. Last one, 4b times b, 4b squared. This is the first terms. The outer terms, the ones on the outside of the binomials. 4b times negative 2 is negative 8b. The inner terms, the ones on the inside, negative 5b. And the last terms in each binomial, positive 10. There is something that can be combined. The b's can be combined. So I would end up with 4b squared minus 13b plus 10. Okay. And that should get it on the multiplication of binomials. So really it's just a big, long, extended distributive property. Make sure that you remember the properties of exponents whenever you multiply like bases, and I don't mean the coefficients out front, I just mean the letters, when you multiply like bases that you would add the exponents.